I don't think it's. Hey guys, uh, welcome to episode 36 of The Weekly, and we are back for another new show. And uh, I'm f I feel like I have like, uh, I'm looking at my screen, I feel like I'm slow. Anyway, <sighs> it's a long night. Um, <laughs> with me here is Mr. Juan Magnell. How's it going, man? I'm going, it's uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I uh, from Thursday to today, I it, this has like been a, a great, a great crunch week. Like some gotten some amazing work done, but I did wake up pretty slow this morning. So I think I'm going to be joining you and being just a little foggy this podcast. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel you. And um, uh, Warren was in there for a second, but he Warren was in with the snazzy new like camera look, new camera angle, everyone else sprucing up their live streaming, and then he just bounced right back out. He's like, I'm looking too sexy for this show. I gotta be out. Uh, he's, he's back. What's up? What's up, Warren? There he is. Look, he's got he's got like right on his chin. He's like, Yeah, I'm I'm pondering. Yeah, we can't hear you. This. We can't hear you. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh Warren. You're looking great though, dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ronald's in the chat, so let's uh, let's uh, let's get things going, guys. Uh, starting off with something. Yeah, I... Oh, yeah, there we you can go. Now. Yeah, yeah, but, but that's uh, this probably sound pretty crappy, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It's coming off the webcam because for some reason my Yeti Pro just does not want Hangouts doesn't like the Yeti Pro now all of a sudden. Just, okay. I don't get this. I hate I hate everything Hangouts. <laughs> anyway. Let's just kick things off. Uh, the first thing, this actually was a news from last week. I was going to mention it last week. I forgot. But uh, Google uh, is committed to a billion dollar grant to train US workers for high tech jobs. I'm going to add the link into the, the description. I just haven't added it there. The search giant regularly expressed a desire to help stem some of the negative impact. And now it's putting his money where its mouth is. But in the tune of a billion dollars, the CEO announced uh, grow with Google at an event on Tuesday in Pittsburgh over the next five years. The initiative will commit a billion dollars to nonprofits aimed at training American workers and helping build businesses. Um, so it looks like uh, Google is one of the first companies, at least big companies, to just kind of step out there and say, like, hey, you know, let's uh, let's help train that workforce because that is the future in terms of uh, what people will be doing for work. I uh, just wanted to get your thoughts. What do you guys think? Well, I mean, no, I think it's it's a brilliant move for a company like Google to be trying to source talent and again, trying to catch them young and impressionable. And, you know, you can you can kind of create your perfect workforce that way. Uh, but at the same time, it's it's also I like it when companies engage in practice, which makes it feel like they're trying to raise all ships. You know what I mean? Like the, a competitive marketplace is really better for Google. Uh, um, a better trained workforce is better for Google and to to invest in that kind of talent, I think, is a, a wise play on their part, not to mention just it's great PR. So it makes the company look look super great. Mm -hmm. uh, Warren, how about you? Um, yeah, I, I agree that it looks pretty good for them to um, to be kind of going after it the way they are towards um, especially people that are coming in young and early. They can better develop uh, the type of worker, the type of uh, caliber of talenting walk because it's kind of been an issue uh, for a lot of people in the uh, sort of hiring spaces that a lot of people can't find the people that they want or can work the way they want them to so it it, um, it turns into them either not finding the person or having to retrain that person but to get that person from onset to be good is probably uh, definitely a good thing for Google and I could, I could see some other companies doing something similar to it yeah yeah definitely I, I think it's a uh... Besides being, uh, like I say, a good PR um, uh, move, but it also um, uh, basically puts things in a very interesting light in terms of how um, tech companies look at that workforce space. And oh. Sam is here. What's up, Sam? Uh, no audio. While well, he fixes that, but definitely, I think it's it's a solid move all around. So, you're right, Sam. You good? I'm I'm doing well. I'm doing well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. So I am here. Why is it All right, let's uh let's move on to the main topics for this week. Um we had a launch, we had um launch events. Yeah, we had of, like uh, several launch events. Yeah, uh, a lot of smartphones this week, but let's start off with the big one. 
Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL are here. So let's get into some aftermath for that that stuff right there. Now, Mr. Huanbag now has the Pixel 2, I believe. Yes. yes. The um, little one. Yes, yes. The one with the better display. Well, okay. Um, yes. <laughs> so first of all, because I, I kind of went off on a little bit of a rant during the Pocket Now podcast, so I'm going to sum up my thoughts a bit more cohesively here. Mm -hmm. But um, we, I think we can all admit that LG's OLED manufacturing is probably about two generations behind Samsung, if we're being generous, right? And one of the issues that I think they're facing as a company is definitely QA, the consistency of the panels that are coming out. And I think that's going to end up being one of the big bummers for the Pixel 2 XL and the LG V30 this year. Um, my V30 screen is actually really good. Um, I showed a screenshot uh, during the, the podcast. I think I can find it again if you guys want to see. But comparing matched output low brightness between my V30 and my Note, my Note is more consistent, but my V30 is pretty good. So it, it's unfortunately going to be one of those buyer beware situations where if you have a screen that's that's way off, you should absolutely go and get it replaced. But I also take some exception to the way that people are testing like at zero percent brightness with a plain gray jpeg i can see that the backlight's inconsistent and i'm freaking out about that i would i would caution that almost no oled is perfectly consistent under those conditions so you're going to freak out about something which is probably normal within the threshold of how an oled is actually produced um, like for example, my note is super ruddy red, has a band a third of the way towards the top of the screen and is way brighter in the left hand, bottom left hand corner than it is in the top right corner. Should I return that phone? No, because under daily usage con conditions, it's completely imperceptible. Those changes. Um, that's not to discredit that I have seen some photos of V thirties that you've got an app on the screen, like a browser, and you can see one section of the screen is noticeably brighter than the other. That's something you need to go and get replaced. But if you're freaking out about what is sort of normal variance in an OLED, then you're really not doing yourself any favors and you're just, you know, burning through phones that don't need to be replaced. I mean, true. Um, one of the things I will say I noticed, because I know one of the people who's he's been pissed on this is Danny Wingett, but then again, his whole thing just used to well, well, but I mean, look at look at the source, though. I mean, I think Danny, Danny, the work that Danny does, he he has built a reputation and deserves the respect of he wants something that's going to be production grade for the work that he does too. And if the V30 is making that claim, then I think he has every expectation of the highest possible uh, quality output for something like that. Yeah, I mean, going back to the V30, my, my pre-production V30 display looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. My um, uh, retail display, I turned it on, was yellow, just straight up from top to oh. bottom. Yeah, I was just like, it's a little better now, but it's just... And did you have any of the adaptive brightness modes on? Just yeah. out of curiosity. Turn, I turned it off. Um, I just turned I turned it off and I just cracked both both screens. I was looking at it and I was like, what kind of crap is this? <laughs> 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 this literally just what happened. So no, no. You're, definitely, you're definitely right with LG has some production issues. Um, the one thing I want to put out there is... So there was this discussion going online and you know warren you know about it too where um so danny with danny's statement was like look i'm not going to pay 850 if or more especially if you're going to get the 128 if you don't have a solid display like just at least out the gate it has to be solid right and a lot of people were like so what's his name um john uh, not john, 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 john morris no no uh, john rethinger was like it's not so bad yeah, it's not so bad. That's where I have my own little beef is that, look, um, as tech reviewers, don't say it's not so bad. Just call it what it is. I mean, it's about setting a fair expectation. So, I mean, yeah, if, I mean, if, if you, you see guys, something, if you guys can see my screen right now, right. if you see something, say something. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to really something, bad. say something. <laughs> New York um, subway. <laughs> you guys can see my screen right now. The V30 is on the left. My Note 8 is on the right. I think we would all agree that the Note 8 is demonstrating a more consistent display output, but the hot spots on my V30, I would not consider those to be deal breakers. Um, and 
the V30, when we're talking about an ultra low light exposure, it's a cooler color tone that actually matches the shade of gray better than the ruddier color tone on my Note 8. So should I be getting rid of all my Samsung phones because they all have red hued screens? And I would say no, I don't think that's that's something that you should be returning a phone for, especially in a climate where we have adaptive color and adaptive brightness modes. I just tend to prefer using those settings off. But this is the same token, my Note 8 is brighter in one corner than the other. It's not as noticeable as it is on the V30. But again, I don't use my phones at 0% brightness with plain one color JPEGs on the screen all the time. So this is not indicative of real world performance. This is like a synthetic benchmark for your screen, not real world usage. Uh, Warren, any thoughts? Um, uh, I think Juan just kind of summed everything up, I suppose. It's, uh, um, as far as like me with the Pixel 2, you, I think you guys see my tweet, what I thought of the Pixel 2 XL display. I have the, the XL version, and it's super straight trash. Sorry, it is. <laughs> straight trash only. It's straight trash. So what's your, what's your experience since you have the 2XL, like in terms of the display? Like, um, it's um, inconsistent. It, it, it's, it started off a little yellow, then it got a little cool, then depending on what angle you look at it, it could be a little bit bluer, like especially if you put something with a white background up on it, it can have a little bit of a yellower tint, or it can be a little bit more bluer, depends on what it is. Um, it, it, it just, for a $1,000 phone, which this is, this, this is about the tax of probably around 1100 bucks or so, to buy this particular model, to buy this and have a display perform in that way is just unacceptable. Does it make it a bad phone? No, that doesn't make it a bad phone. That's There's more to a phone than this display, and the display is one of the most important things, but there's more aspects to it. And there's some people that aren't even going to care that the display looks in the way that it does. But I think that's something that has to be concerning to uh, LG and for Google to, to look at and say that if, if people are spending thousands of dollars on this phone, thousand bucks or more on, on the smartphone, the display has to be top notch or match what the competitors put out there. They're either a little bit cheaper than you or roughly around the same price as you. So I, I don't quite understand from their choice of we'll, we'll put the the AMOLED display that's proven to work better on the smaller device and not put it on the bigger device when there's probably going to be more people honestly probably going after the bigger device. Your reviews are probably going to be more based on the bigger device as well too. Well, and, and people are going to be spending more money on the bigger device as well no, too. I, I completely agree with that. I think a major issue is Google going with dual partners again. I, I mean, if this is a commentary that HTC wasn't wasn't capable of getting the job done, in their work up to the second generation phone, which is surprising because they put out two phones um, last year all through HTC. That That's maybe part of the commentary. But I, I think you're going to run into these kinds of QA problems and consistency problems when you're working with different manufacturers for what's ostensibly the same line of phones. And, and I think this is gonna be one of the, the major bummers of the Pixel launch is that they kind of feel like two different phones. It kind of feels like a Nexus 5 and a Nexus 6P again. It doesn't feel like one cohesive brand statement, or at least less so than it did last year. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that, because the, 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 the XL feels like a very different device. I haven't really had a chance to put my hands on the regular Pixel 2, but um, I think a lot of people say the Pixel 2 feels very similar to last year's phone from what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, um, a lot. Uh, the XL, and, and some people that I've, I know have Pixels, I've shown them the XL, and it, there is a bit of a different feel to it and different look to it. It doesn't quite match up to, in terms of one cohesive line. So I think it would have fared better for them to have probably worked with one manufacturer. I don't know, pay Samsung more for some more AMOLED displays at this size because they seem to be getting it right because OLEDs are not easy to manufacture, they are something to have a high failure rate when making them. So yeah. it, if you know one partner is doing very well with this, you might want to stick with them, especially what bothers me, it's the more expensive device that has essentially the lesser quality display, not only from the POLED, being a, being a POLED, but also having a, a less uh, pixel density as well too, than the, um, than the original one. I mean, not even more than the Pixel 2. It's just questionable things that I don't, I'm not sure where Google is going 
in, in terms of what they were. It's like they were trying to save money somewhere, <laughs> and they picked the wrong place to save money <laughs> uh, for a company that's got. I, I don't know. I don't know about cash. that. I mean, I, I really do. I really do think that Whoa. this was this was Google's inexperience in making hardware. And last year, I think they got really lucky with relying on HTC as a source. And then, like, well, we've had great experiences working with LG in the past. Here's our reference. Make a phone around that reference. And again, I don't think that they were as involved in the conversation on QA as they should have been. I mean, like, you're, you're totally right. I'm actually not a big fan of Samsung's OLEDs this year, but they've been remarkably consistent. So if they're remarkably oh. consistent, you can adjust for variants but, much, much easier than what we can do with LG right now, where they seem to be all over the place in terms of quality. Well, let, 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 let's be real here. Let's, let's just say what should be said about displays and smartphones. Oh. Um, OK. Ah, it's getting real. The reality is nobody cares how real the image and colors are. It just needs to pop and say, wow. That's yeah. all it needs to honestly do. This is why Samsung is the king of this. They make the news flash right front of you. They make your super retina. And, and they made the retina display before, too. They've been making a, a, a Apple panels for a while. That's why they look and pop the way they do, and they're very consistent. You look at AMOLED displays, they look and they pop the way that they do. And it's, no one cares about how realistic they look. No one really does, except for like the few people out there that want to be nerds and really want to point out, well, the colors might be here versus there. Who cares on a five-inch display? You want things to look, you just want to look at it and go, ooh, that looks like eye candy and it's pleasing to the eye. That's all that it really matters in, in the end of the day with, with, with that. Yeah. that. That being said, it's disappointing that Google didn't get this right with LG on this display to make something consistent that worked that way. I think they were looking at something like Pula, which probably cost them less. Let's be let's face facts. Probably, this costs less than what they probably pay on the five-inch device. And they're looking up like we can make a little bit more margin off of this. We use this, and we've been sold that this technology is similar enough to perform in the same way as an AMOLED display, as a standard one. And they've been bamboozled, apparently, <laughs> with the consistencies of it. But uh, I think um, going back to uh, people just being outraged and saying that the device is terrible and stuff like now, that, 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 that there's the judgment still on how bad, how good, or how bad the device is. The display isn't just going to say that because still, in the end of the day, it's still a, it, it's a good display. It's just not what you would expect out of on on a, on, a, on a phone of this price range. But um, the reality is, like I said before, nobody cares about realistic. Companies. Sam, any any thoughts you want to interject? I know well, we Warren haven't played with the device, so I... yeah, Warren seems to have covered everything. There. And uh, between Warren and Wanda, it seems to cover everything. But but my, my, my question still is, at the end of the day, if Google really wants to, um, you know, if they, if they want to be a powerhouse when it comes to making devices, it's going to be very interesting to see what they do with the HTC uh, uh, crew that they have, right? So, well, in a sense, HTC, I guess you could say, has proven itself with this launch. Because yeah, the yeah. two, I mean, the two is the one that no one's complained about with this. Yeah, exactly. Like, so yes, what, it's, it's really what they do with that, um, with that crew that it got in house. Now, are they going to now say, you know what? Let's screw using other people to make phones. Let's just stick to this team and go with a consistent Google. Be it for you know, for better or worse, we'll go consistently Google and everything. Or are they going to still try to include some of their OEMs or some of their partners, I should say, in this? And it seems from the launch of this device, uh, the answer is stick to the in-house crew <laughs> because it, they, yeah, they I, haven't. Well, I, I, that's, they're going to need someone else to manufacture them. But I think they're just going to really stick to just HTC. And when they yeah. need another Apple the panel, they're going to get in the order to Samsung early. Yeah, <laughs> that's or, what they're just going to do. Or they need to have a presence in LG manufacturing to say, you know, we're going to do your QA and you're going to pay us, you know, a certain rate per these PL LEDs. But if they don't live up to this standard, we're going to keep scrapping screens until they do. I mean, in, in a way, I think it's a little like Leica and Huawei. Leica isn't actually making anything, but they're very involved in the QA on yeah. on those components. And so it's to LG's credit that, you know, they it would be to LG's credit if Google were in there and actually responsible for LG's QA, because then LG would have to spend a ton more money throwing away displays that don't live up or putting them in the V30. 
<laughs> but, uh, you know, that yield would become getting that yield higher would become critically important for improving the situation. But again, I mean, we're talking about a company that's probably about two full generations behind its competition while also trying to radically change things up like uh, resolution, pixel density and aspect ratio. Yeah. Imagine, imagine uh, Zaggy says, when will we start looking at Google as a regular corporation instead of a forward thinking tank company? They're all about the cash for me. Well, I mean, but they were always about that. It's just, <laughs> I don't think anybody was up for that. No, no, yeah. a lot of people look at Google like it's a forward thinking company still. Well, no, 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 that's the only thing. So no entity exists just to think forward. They all exist to provide value to shareholders. Um, yeah. We should never that's forget right. that. But I mean, in talking about the actual phones um, outside of just the display issues, I, I don't think anyone's going to be shocked that this is just a slightly faster version of what we had last year with the uh, the original Pixel. I haven't gotten too deep into the camera um, yet. So, okay. I've only had That's it. the question I wanted to ask both of you quickly because we do need to move to other devices that we have. Uh, yeah. Just quickly, thoughts on the camera in terms of at least the portrait modes. I know you guys have okay. probably tried that um, front and back. Yeah, so so oh, I can't the get the front to do a portrait shot on mine. I haven't I, even I've, tried yet. My, I, I, I keep, I keep flipping Sorry, it and bad. trying to hit the modes and it doesn't do anything. The portrait mode on the rear is better than I thought it would be. <laughs> But Google image processing still has a ways to go. Almost every single shot I've taken has had weird cutout issues. Like say, you know, I'm kind of turned and you can see like this cut on my neck. Yeah. There would be like a hard line off of the mirror behind me where Google will include that as part of okay, my face. Okay, Juan, Juan, you're doing it all wrong. Stop posing, stand still. No, 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 I'm doing, I'm, doing, I'm doing my best like selfie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, this, is, this is like if we're going to call it a portrait mode, really, we, we really got to test this stuff. And then this this software has not yet learned how to cut out around hats. So, again, for someone like me, I, I, I like to wear hats. I wear a lot of hats. I, I mean, I still have hair. It's not that I'm bald. It's just that I like hats. <laughs> um, when when um, when the software starts figuring out that stuff, it will be a lot better. But right now, in its current incarnation, I like dual sensors better if you really care about portrait mode. But okay. I think software will quickly overtake dual lens. It's just going to take some time and some updates to get there. Uh, Warren? Um, yeah, as far as the uh, hold on. So can, as far as the portrait mode, um, it's it works, it, but it, it's got to be it's got to be in very perfect conditions for it to work out very well. Um, I would say, it, like what Juan was saying, there are some sort of issues with the mode, but it's a software-driven thing. It's it's probably a little bit further ahead than Apple's portrait mode, just a little bit, um, I would say, with that. But um, the one thing that it lacks is you don't have those extra lighting things and features to really kind of yeah. to really like put that to the test. So you're really just shooting bokeh. You're really not mm -hmm. shooting anything else. And it does a good job of that, but you don't really get anything else. Um, some of the photos, I, you know, walking past and just, just, I was just walking through the comments and I didn't even stop and took photos and I got steady shots all throughout. Mm -hmm. So the OIS and ESO do work very well. Um, it's it's going to take some more time to really test this thing to see where those claims come up. It, it, so far, it's a pretty good camera. It's, it, it's, it's a good camera. I don't know if it's going to be dual lens cameras out there. Um, I think this is probably be the last year we can see a single lens camera on a, on a feature phone and say that it you know it stacks up to the competition because by next year i would hope everyone's on a dual lens system of some, of some design and um and really incorporating both of those with software to create some you know really good photos finally get to that you know really intense 20 level which is what i think all of us would love to see yeah. um, happen uh, once again uh, the, the, the camera itself looks good. Um, there's still this issue, and I forgot what Juan called it. It was something last year. There, when you <laughs> still, it? no, no, not that. The, the 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 video, the video still crops kind of weird when you try to record. It oh, is it? Yeah. So I haven't shot a lot of video with mine yet, but it, it, there there is a different. It's it's difficult to frame from the viewfinder because yeah. of how the image stabilization will crop in on the frame. And and I, I know that's a necessary evil, but 
from the two or three videos that I've shot from mine, it's at least better than where we were last year. <laughs> but it's almost like you you always want to frame wider than what you think you should so that the final output is cropped in better. Um, and, and that right. to me is something I'm like, I am not used to doing that after shooting on Samsung and LG, where when I line up the viewfinder, I'm pretty close. That's really close to what the final output's going to look like. I can predict that really well. It's there's something unpredictable about the way that the well, pixel will the, crop your video. On the other phones, you're not getting the instant um, instant crop the second you switch to video mode, because pretty much whatever you see in photo mode, the finder essentially matches in video at the same exact time. You're, you're like if you're trying to switch to, to shoot a video, whatever you have framed there is pretty much one for what one. What you see, what yeah. you see. But now when you look, when you when you when you when you turn on the pixel and you're zoomed in on the shot, and then you swap the video. All of a sudden, you're whoosh, either past your shot or way too zoomed into your shots. So you know you have to back up and try to reframe it again, and, or you like it, it, it's it's just weird. It make it makes trying to shoot photos and videos at the same time kind of cumbersome. Yeah, because you have to essentially, you, you have to have, you have two, to guess. I mean, you, you have guess. To, you have to guess. You have to take. You have to have two. You, you essentially have to have two modes of shooting. You have to have a photo, and then you have to know how oh, I'm shooting video, so I need to reframe it. I have this way of shooting video, and guess anywhere from two to five feet where you need to be between whatever is you're actually actually shooting. So, um, well, no, I think I think you're wrong, Warren. I think it got like a two hundred and three score on DXO, and oh, it's geez. the best camera ever. So, um, yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> real, real quick before be, before we leave the pixel, um, I do want to say that there is something really important to talk about with audio. Um, so uh, the stereo speakers, they're good. I mean, th I think people are going to enjoy them. Obviously, no headphone jack is a major bummer not having it built into the phone. But I was ridiculously excited to see that the protocol that Google is using, the uh, oh, that's a good shot. Yeah, that's the portrait mode right there. That's like, when you really get good. it on point, you'll nail it. But when you, but because you have no controls over how that works, you, you're constantly guessing. It's, it's almost the same yeah. thing as the portrait mode on the, on, the, on the iPhone. But the difference is, I think Google software gets us more, more accurately right than not. Then, 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 you know, but um, I mean, the only strange cutout I can see is the green leaf at the very bottom of the flower, but it's it's blended well enough that I don't think that's super distracting. Um, yeah, but you were saying about audio, Juan. Oh yes, yeah. so, right. we um, so so the dongle is actually just a regular USB audio device that can be recognized by any any modern phone. So I mean, any phone this year, I, I plugged it into a V30, and it, the V30 knew what to do with this dongle and then I plugged it into my laptop's Thunderbolt port and a little pop up on Windows like oh yeah let's just install one extra little piece of software for this USB audio device and that's Windows Windows can handle that we No 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 but that's that's what I mean though yeah. is re let's not forget this looks exactly like the same kind of solution that Motorola and HTC use but those dongles do not, not function work, yeah. as USB audio devices they are just in pass through from the phone with the DAC built into the phone, they just have pinouts. Okay. So if Google, if Google can actually tap manufacturers to start utilizing this solution, we'll finally be taking the right step towards USB-C audio. So I'm not happy that the Pixel doesn't have, uh, well one, I'm really not happy that the Pixel doesn't have earbuds in the box like an iPhone. And I'm really not happy yeah. that the Pixel has a dongle. But this is the right path moving forward. So again, we're talking about a two-year plan out before I have really good cabled headphone solutions. But if Sennheiser or Audio-Technica or AKG, if those companies want to make a high-quality audio experience, they now have a standard that they can interact with. And I, as a consumer, get a product where I can invest in some really nice headphones, plug them into my phone, have the headphones be responsible for a high quality audio experience, pop that out of my phone, plug it directly into my laptop and not have to worry about any other cables or dongles or adapters. This is the right path moving forward. Now we just need the manufacturers to back it up. All right, cool. Now, speaking of path moving forward, um, Huawei also has two phones they announced that don't have headphone jacks. And I'm talking about the Mate 10 and the Mate 10 Pro, which announced this week. Um, 
thoughts on those devices? Because the Pro to me is, has some interesting, we were going back and forth with the specs, uh, Warren, <laughs> especially with the display um, and the fact that they told me they couldn't uh, put in a headphone jack because of water resistance and bezels. And I was, I was holding my Galaxy Note 8 in front of them going. Well, I mean, other companies can. Huawei legitimately might not be able to do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm going to shut up. Someone else talk about um, I, I'll, I'll start off with it. Um, from my experience using the device, um, the Mate 10 and Mate 10 Pro, solid. I want to see what that NPU of theirs does. So they really stress that they have this neural processor. Uh, the one thing they showcase was whenever you were taking photos, you know how we have food mode and all those kind of things. Uh, the NPU recognizes those those objects immediately, and it will basically go to the right settings for your photos to give you the best type of photo, which I thought was pretty cool. It's it's taking. It's taking what Apple does with this camera software, making it smarter and letting the consumer know exactly what you're actually doing. So it's not just I'm snapping a photo, but it's I'm snapping a photo and I'm taking, you know, images of food and it's changing those settings. So we'll see what else they do with the MPU. They talked about it using being used with apps. They have to work with developers with that and also um, um, doing a lot of work locally. So. Microsoft Translate, for instance, uh, can work with the MPU locally to translate, you know, um, different languages without actually connecting to the cloud. So say, for instance, you travel to a different country and you don't have a SIM card yet, you can still get all that information, you know, like directions and things like that without actually connecting to a service or, you know, getting on the internet. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, in terms of the cameras, they look great. Uh, I have to see them in action. I just didn't, you know, we just took a few sh shots and you know, like, all right, this is nice. This is cool. Uh, but overall, I think it was solid. Uh, we'll see what they do with, um, I don't know. I just just didn't like the idea of the Pro because spec wise, I felt like they should have just kept it one phone and mm. called it a day, you know? So that's, that's my thought. Uh, anyone else? Uh, yeah, I, I, there are some issues with uh, Huawei's strategy this year because it really does seem to me that they've got, they're trying to build different products and different SKUs for different regions, but that's causing a lot of confusion between the specs on these two devices. So, if, okay, so I mean, like if we're doing the math, if you want the most screen real estate, you don't get the Pro. I know it says six inch screen and the, the Mate 10 is a 5.9 inch screen, but the, because of the aspect ratios, there is more screen real estate on the Mate 10 than there is on the Mate 10 Pro. So you get the better pixel density and the bigger screen on the device that's actually- And the higher resolution also as well. Yeah. That's what I mean, but that's what I mean though, is yeah. like uh, the resolution and pixel density and more screen real estate on the lesser device so this this to me is just I, I think it's going to be very difficult well and we know that huawei is going to be sending some phones to some regions and some phones to other re regions we had a, someone chime in on the pocket now weekly saying like well here in the netherlands we're only going to get the mate light and the mate pro we're not going to get the regular mate 10 according to the, the various press releases that have come out so here in the united states i'm pretty confident that we'll get an unlocked mate 10 we probably won't get an Pro. unlock sold to United States Mate 10 Pro. You know, so these different split ups in these different divisions are going to be very difficult to communicate to consumers. The same criticism that I had with the LG G6, but Huawei's taking that that issue and blowing it up even bigger with different SKUs, different RAM quantities, different storage quantities, different screen technologies, different form factors. I don't think this is a good way to launch a product opposite Apple and LG this year. Anyone else? Uh, Sam? No, I haven't um, haven't really got my hands on the phone, so I haven't seen any uh, any other new released phones. So I'm just listening to see which one <laughs> I'm interested in. So so far it's it's, it's the, the Pixel 2, not the XL, the Pixel 2. 
Okay. All right, let's let's move forward to um, the other device announced this week. Uh, ZTE had a big event and they showcased their dual screen device. Um, this is the Axion M. Um, and uh, yeah, Warren, do you want to kick it off? Thoughts? Warren's not around, so I guess I'll kick it off. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, you, I, I mean, you actually got to go check it out. We unfortunately we had to. Say I it. didn't check out the device. The colonel did, and he's not here. So. Oh, that's <laughs> true. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> that video was phenomenal too, by the way, because I don't know that I've ever seen Michael Fisher so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, uh, somewhere else. Come talk to this. <laughs> no, it's, it's great the moment you picked where it's like you, your, your attention shifts just a second to someone else, and he's like, yes. Go talk to that other person. <laughs> I'm out of here. I've never seen Michael hit the eject button so aggressively. Like, get out, 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 get out. Yeah, no, I mean, it was it was fun. It was fun shooting that. Um, I want to thank everyone who actually just like at least you know stayed on camera and did it yeah. and didn't run away. Um, but I mean, the 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 action M is very reminiscent of the Curiosity Echo. Um, the one thing about I like I part of me likes the device and part of me does not at the same time. And you have it right there, right? Yeah. No, I have the QSR. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um and part of it, so the you know, the the flip out screen, they've done a really good job. It's a really thin slit, so it's really small. That's the part that doesn't bother me. It's the mm -hmm. bezel that does bother me. Because when you hold it as a regular phone, it's it's fine. But when you flip it, it really just becomes this odd thickness on the sides. And I'm like, I wish you just I know, I know we some people have complained that we shouldn't get into the you know thin bezel craze, but I wish they had just cut down those bezels in half. Mm. You know, because then I really, really go like, oh, I have kind of like a tablet experience here on there. Um, the functionalities they talked about, yes, you can mirror this. The display, you can extend it, you can have two different applications running, you can watch the same video of both sides, you know. Um, it, those things are nice, uh, but it didn't give me a use case scenario that I said, okay, this is like, it's killer. I mean, it's just one of those things where I was like, okay, fine. Like, you know, we went out, uh, grab, we, I grabbed some drinks yesterday with, with, uh, with Sam, and I could show him a video and I could watch the same video you know, intense, oh, yeah. but okay. I can also just put this display of the screen now on the yeah. table and we can both watch the video anyway. And, and well, and also it's, it's, on your own. Oh, well, I was going to say, who are you sitting with as a friend that you would want to share a video with that you wouldn't want to sit side by side? I mean, it could be the sitting situation in, in the restaurant or just, bar you're in. I'm just saying. <laughs> maybe, maybe your friendship was a little cold. Now, you know, you, Trying to share it to make it warmer. <laughs> that's, a, that's a kind of crappy experience. I don't know, man. Um, I mean, like, no, but I mean, the thing that really gets me about this is you're really not getting, you know, extra screen real estate per se. You're just getting more functionality out of it. So if you look at when you're watching video on YouTube, you don't get an you don't get extra screen real estate for 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 the video. It's just the other screen you can now scroll through comments while you're watching the video which yeah. is cool it, it is cool i mean it doesn't add anything to the overall screen yeah so so here's my thing with it is the one thing that really bummed it out was when i heard the price and i believe or at least it's not official but the rumor pricing i think is about 750 and i was like i get it you're putting two displays but really this should be 500 bucks it's a, it's I mean, I, you know, problem. you know how I get cranky about trying to ascribe a value or a price. I, mean, I know. I, I <laughs> amount of engineering. You've got two displays. There's probably a ton of custom developer work that has to happen for something like that. And we're talking about a smaller manufacturer that can't get, you know, manufacturing deals to the same price point as an Apple or a Samsung. So I understand why it can't be 500. Um, you're right, though. If you want it to fly off the shelves, that would have been nice. Um, but it's just wholly unrealistic that, I mean, what's, what's frustrating is it's another example of don't be first. So Z no, but, but, but is, they're, they're second. Well, but I mean, of the modern smartphone, <laughs> area, oh, they're really <laughs> not going to remember. I mean, I, for the pocket now podcast and I can't find it. I don't know where it is now. The, uh, I have the Sony tablet P which is that weird like clamshell tablet that unfolds with two screens and there's a huge bezel <laughs> interrupting the two displays. Um, 
you 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 just don't want to be the company that that is first out of the gate. There's no there's no benefit to you to innovate or to do something different or to experiment because next year we'll probably get some sort of Samsung folding OLED, like an actual bending screen that delivers pretty much exactly the same experience, but with without any kind of hinge in the middle. And then everyone will go, oh, well, that was the right way to do it. You know, so ZTE, to their credit, is trying to do something different in 2017. And I think they're just going to get punished for it. I don't know. I, 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 I just I just think I think they could have done more. It could have they could have figured out a better way to use a viewer screen set. I mean, no, I mean, if oh. wishes were horses, definitely. But I, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the, the problem is, is when we're asking that question, I legitimately and I, I would consider myself to be a wannabe futurist. I have difficulties with any kind of expanding screen phone. I, I mean, I just I do not see the legit benefit in a world where we're starting to peel services off of a phone where we're looking at other multi and mixed use usage modes like Huawei showing off a, a, a DeX style interface, but you don't even need to own a dock. You just plug your, yeah. your phone directly into a monitor. If you want more screen real estate in a more computing style environment, we have solutions for that. But we've seen, and, we've seen a dual screen device work and we've yeah. seen it on the show Westworld. And, and there have been other dual screen devices. <laughs> even, even from a gaming <laughs> perspective, I'm not even gonna add that. <laughs> even from a gaming perspective, Nintendo has done stuff with dual screen as well. Right, so, but you're talking about a, a device of a singular focus in this world. No, that's what I'm saying. This does not have to be a device of a, of just a singular focus. They could have made this into an actual multi-use device with this um, with the screen. And I think all they just decided to do was, hey, we're going to tackle another screen, and that's going to be the selling feature. Like, whoa, would you like a phone with another screen? Oh, wow, people might like that. Let's just put another screen on the phone, and, and that's it. Like, I okay. mean, I, I think you're right. What's I think because well, I mean, but, the... to be, but to be fair, like, the thing is, I mean, we can sit here and say, I wish they could do more, but what are we trying to articulate? What are we wanting them to do? What do we, what usage are you lacking from your phablets, from your note? that during your day, you're saying, man, I wish I had this, which could only be delivered by having a second display on my phone. Well, and, that's, and I think that's this is, this is like too. tablets in general. I think tablets are a solution in search of a problem. And you can't know what problem you have until you have this solution to fix it. And I think that's a backwards way to go about producing consumer electronics. No, I agree. But the thing is, this is that, um... They're the ones who made it. No one asked. Them. We, I didn't ask them to make it. I'm just saying that. <laughs> no, yeah. they have to have an answer for yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. But, I, so but, I'm just asking them. I'm like, what is the answer? Because sitting at the press conference, I felt like they kept on going like, oh, you can watch this and you can watch this and you can, you know, it's like Samsung saying, here's the S Pen. And then Samsung gave us reasons to have the S Pen. Totally. So that's just all. I think that's just the main thing is that I don't think they did a good job in convincing, at least me, or why yeah, that second I, I think, is important. I think they have delivered something cool and they've made a very poor argument for it. But I, I, for me, I, I'm, I'm not a fan, I was never a fan of phablets until I got my hands on a phablet, right? I was never the fan of tablets until I actually got a tablet and used it. I, I, was, I wasn't a fan of MP3 players until I got one and I started using it. But this, I don't know if anyone could really be a fan of this even after getting your hands on it you know that that's the question really like who is uh, this for who's the target market and i don't think there's a target market for this at all they you know? didn't answer it at the event at all that's for sure yeah so. and i think that's dangerous territory for launching a product especially when zte bought a lot of reviewer goodwill last year with the axon 7. i i i want an axon 8 and I'm happy to see companies experimenting. I don't want phones to get too boring. But I need to know who, what, where, when, why, and how, not it's cool. I can't I can't I can't sell a narrative just on it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's um um it it's difficult to say because like pricing it at the price, but you know, I really thought they were gonna make this phone something that would 
well, maybe be on a large carrier at a cheaper price, but then they push this out to like the boost mobiles and the crickets of the world and really maybe try to go towards the teenage market that might be interested in something, something, you know, a little funkier and that's a little bit different and, 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 and try to push up that way rather than really just literally make a better version of the echo and give us no real use case for it. Well, I mean, they're, they're trying to make the argument, but I find their arguments. They don't lack, have one. They don't lack, have a real use case. They're not, not compelling. Every use case that they put in, that they talked about, essentially was resolved with adding dual, dual app support within Android, within <laughs> iOS. Like every single thing they mentioned is just like, yeah, we can already kind of do all this. Yeah. I mean, uh, that, that is true. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on. Um, Microsoft um, had a, an, I guess, two launches this week. The second one we'll talk about with the connected speakers. But uh, the first one, which was kind of quiet, um, out of nowhere, uh, <laughs> they announced the Surface Book 2. They're like, here you go. Um, and um, in terms of specs, in terms of what they brought to the table, I know you've checked it out, Juan. And uh, Warren, you have too. And, and Sam is is looking at the videos, checking it out right now. And um, <laughs> but what, what they what they brought to the table was an update to the Surface Book 2. So aesthetically, it still looks the same. Uh, they said they've made some changes to the hinge. What you do have is the device that now is powered by a up to quad core processor uh, uh, mm -hmm. generation, 16 gigs of RAM. Now, there were some things I found funny because I was looking at the spec sheet. I saw 16 gigs max, and it said DDR3. I'm hmm. not sure if it is. I oh, mean, that I, I didn't even think to follow up on. I should have asked them about that. I was like, huh, okay. Um, interesting. Maybe it's because I thought all surfaces are running DDR4, but maybe it's just a typo or mistake. I'll, uh, I'll have to find I out. I don't know. We thought about that about Huawei and their displays too between the Mate and the Mate Pro. Yeah, yeah. I was like, it's 2K. He's like, no. <laughs> I was like, but they told, like, never mind. You know, they changed this. Um, and then the display for the 15 inch is also slightly off. I don't know if that has to do with the aspect ratio. So it is 3240 by 2160, not 3840 by 2160. So, no, well, that, that makes sense though, because it's not a 16. The, it's, the, it's a three by two. Three by yeah. two. Yeah. yeah. So, so some people are like, is it 4K? I'm like, I mean, technically it is. It's just the aspect well, but ratio. I think it's, 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 I, I think that's probably a good play opposite i mean like for example i have a razor blade and it's not it's a 3k yeah screen and i mean like at at, at a uh it's a 15 inch or 14 inch no right 13 13 inch the razor blade stealth not the stealth the razor oh, the blade. gtx 1060 yeah yeah it's so, 13. yeah yeah so it, at that at that screen diagonal windows even has problems with 3k let alone what you're desktop is going to look like at 4k unless you want to use it in old person super large icon mode <laughs> yeah um and then in terms of um gpus you now have a 1015 the 13 inch and you have a 1060 in the uh 15 inch variants um microsoft also talked about 17 hours of battery life actually it's video playback battery life just to be mm -hmm. correct uh, but that's still quite a bit um, on the device. Well, it's a nice bump up from the first one. Yeah. The first one, yeah. Um, in general, I mean, and, and also they have a USB Type C port now. No Thunderbolt, but USB Type C. So I am, I, I personally am happy for that. Um, I like. I'm glad that they added this there. It was just interesting to see how Microsoft uh, announced this. It's kind of the same way they announced the initial uh, Microsoft Band, where mm -hmm. they they had this press release go out at like nine o'clock at night. And there were videos, and they're like, "Oh, here it is. And you can buy it tomorrow." I mean, this is due in no on November 9th. But uh, this general thoughts: What do you guys think of the update to the Surface Book? Nice. Sam, Sam, I really like this. Uh, the 13.5 inch is what I've always been saying about, um, you know, what the Surface needs to be. Basically, they should be able to take out the fans there. Remember the launch of the the, the Pro Three? Um, I was like, you know, they can make this thinner. They can make the you know the screen a lot thinner and they don't need fans and they finally did it on the 13 uh, the 13 and a half inch they took out the uh, the fans in there um they've made it thinner they made it lighter they increased the battery life from last year's model i think last year's model was two hours if you undocked it now i think they say it's about five hours undocked so that's yeah. actually that's progress that's yeah. <laughs> to me this is massive progress 
from um, uh, from Microsoft. And the fact that they didn't even have any real fanfare around it is kind of mind boggling. It's very strange the way that they yeah. announced the product, yeah. But but the fifteen inch, I, I say what like I am not comfortable with the price on either of this anyway. But the fifteen inch for what they are trying to do with mixed reality, having a laptop like this that can do, basically run a four uh, K display and also connect uh, is powerful enough to connect to uh, an AR rig. I think this is it, it is the right uh, the smart move to make. Because you are tying in, you know, Microsoft future looking uh, technology for AR um, or mixed reality and tie, tying this into, um, you know, a device they're releasing. So it shows some kind of, um, uh, I would say, symbiosis in the ecosystem, which I can definitely, you know, applaud them. This is, this is Microsoft. I think they've done everything right here. Like for the last couple of releases they've had, uh, I think they've done everything right. So they, but you know, you know, clap uh, for Microsoft. They're doing a good job. I don't, we don't say that often enough <laughs> on this show. So, you know, it's, it's nice to congratulate them on doing something right, you know? Yeah. Uh, Juan? Yeah, I, I agree. I think maybe to Microsoft's credit, the quieter announcement might just go hand in hand with the fact that it's going to be shipping later. Um, in, in every way that like LG annoys me when they announce a product and then you have no idea when it's actually going to ship for over a month as they sort out all of their deals that maybe that's the one thing I can point to that Microsoft is doing well here in terms of talking about the product. Um, no, this is addresses pretty much every issue I had with the, uh, the first generation Surface Book and why I went with a Razer instead of a Surface Book is because I wanted touchscreen, I wanted... Um, a, de a dedicated GPU. I wanted a Thunderbolt port. Um, that's why I ended up with my Razer. And this now gets me so much closer to working in Microsoft's hardware ecosystem. I I I'm still a little cranky that it's USB-C and not Thunderbolt. But that's a little bit easier to deal with than just, we've got two legacy USB ports and that's it. Um, yeah, isn't it crazy though that they have a USB type C port there, but they still have their uh, proprietary charger? <laughs> yeah. Like, come yeah. on. Dude. I mean, but again, what are you doing here? What, no, 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 see, but but I, do, I do like it because it just means that if you started with a Surface 1, yeah, you can yeah. still. Yeah. Does that's, that's, that's true. true. That is true. But we're we're still yeah. never gonna get our unicorn device where it's like you know we have technologies that do a better job of tackling. But you know what? It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> every, every device is gonna have compromises. Yeah. Um. The one thing that I'm I'm really curious about, and uh, I, I, it's and it's not that I think it's gonna be bad. I'm not expecting it to be bad. But I am curious, is what is it? What what is the usage of a 15 inch tablet that we needed that on? a surface book that you know I, I i microsoft is doing a pretty good job of trying to address user concerns that was a big talking point for them when they were on new egg is like we're i mean the stuff that we're coming out with is stuff that people have been complaining about not we just think it's a cool idea so I, i'll be I will, curious just to see how that handles I, you know, I will like, give you, i'll give you the examples that they showcase when we did the hands-on is mm -hmm. one editing on a 15 inch is just better than editing on the 13 inch mm. just call it what it is totally but but yeah. what i mean is yeah. is yeah. i'm not I, I think it's it's attaching that and using it, that as a tablet so the the one that about. it did was they detached it and they had um an architectural board i mean like schematics right Mm -hmm. And they showcased that on the 15 and it looked very, I mean, it just looked big and it looked like you could go in and whatever you, if you're an architect, like that's, that's the kind of stuff you do. Like it's that kind of thing where if you're, if you're using the pen and if you're doing things that require that, a 15 inch makes more sense because at least right. the real estate is much larger for you as opposed to the 13 inch where it, you, know, you can still do the same thing it's just smaller so i think that's where it really shines it's that whenever you're doing anything with a pen that really is where the 15 inch would work for you and the fact that because you know the surface book when you flip it around you can bend it you've got that little tilt totally, you, totally. you know you now can sketch and do all that kind of stuff that you want to that also adds to it there so i, I think I think they is that wanna, use case there. I want to try and hold it though, because I even get cranky with ten inch tablets in like a, a a moving kind of scenario, which is what I always imagine. Like 
I can detach this from its base and use it separate. It's not like I flip it around and just lay it flat on the keyboard. This is yeah. designed to be used as a wholly separate tablet touch device. And I kind of just want to get a feel for what does that mean when I'm walking around with something like that? Because that's that's something that's a little scary to me. Like here is the actual <laughs> brains and guts of my super, super expensive computer that could slide right through my fingertips if I'm not being super careful in how I'm using it. I mean, so, you remember the price you pay for it and then you hold it real tight. Oh no, you know, I remember the price I pay for it and I never <laughs> really ever detach it from a keyboard dock. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Warren, how about you? I know, I know you were there uh, when, when we checked it out, which was kind of funny too. Remember, like we walked into Intel and they're like, what do you like to look at? We're like, I don't know what you have. You're like, we have the service book too. Thank you very much. Where is it? Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it's an interesting uh, upgrade for it with a little fanfare, which is surprising. Um, I think the cooler things was, was kind of watching the surface dial and the mouse sort of work in conjunction with the... Um, with the the new oh, yeah they have too. the new mouse too Oof. yeah you know it, that was a that was like a pretty cool to see that um the 15 inch i only the only time i saw where the tablet mode became a thing but the, the thing is i as Juan was saying well if i just pull it out and just use that on its own i almost don't see anyone using it that way i i feel that they'll take it off flip it and bring the keyboard and the, and, and the rest of it with them and just use it from the other side yeah. more like a more like, like an actual Lenovo. sketchbook, but more like an actual yeah. drawing book. So when they draw and write on it, because that's what Remy was doing when he was sort of drawing and animating on to the uh, on the uh, surface on a surface book, it wasn't like he just had just the the, the tablet portion of it. He had the whole thing folded over, which gave him more grip and yeah. held better I mean, in exactly. his hand. Exactly. I'm I'm so used to the yoga, uh, Lenovo's yoga, that that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. I, I do agree. I think I think a lot of people will do that. And I think the only use case scenario where you detach is if you're in a work environment and you finish doing some work or sketch, or whatever, you might detach and go and show a colleague or your boss or something. And like, here, here it is. Like, you know, check it out. But, I, but I almost don't go see back a scenario and talk your thing again. Won't. But I almost see a scenario where someone isn't walking around with the keyboard and that together. Mm -hmm. It's like they're, they're, they're going to walk with it around with them in some way. Which is just gonna make it easier so it doesn't fall out of their hands, like what Juan is saying. I think somebody will recognize recognize that earlier. Said, "Not gonna lose twenty five hundred dollars here." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, the battery life on this thing is not gonna be the kind of thing where you're just gonna undock and use it for a whole day and then forget, you know, where you've put something. No, you you're going to want to have the base around you. And yeah, because the base has the know, extra battery, of course. Yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. So. Kudos to Microsoft on that one. Um, and uh, we'll see when it's pre-orders on November 9th. So like you said, it is coming out later um, in terms of uh, oh, the, the, the uh, most expensive configuration is it's the $3,300. Yeah, yeah. It's, one it's, terabyte SSD though. So that, that's nice. <laughs> it is nice. Uh, moving on to uh, just quick one here. HTC U 11 plus event, November 2nd, um, HTC teased um what are you calling it teased teased on twitter uh and we also have images of said device i'm just going to share my screen with you guys so you can take a look at it share screen here it is that's u11 cool oh that's a glossy uh oh yeah it's, it's going to keep the, the the shine uh it's got a single camera in the back uh I, I, Looks like a G6. Yeah. Yeah. Thinner bezels, at least on the sides. I, I mean, you know what? I, to, I know I'm being a little underwhelmed here, but I am kind of happy to see that it's just a flat front face. Uh, it, it's been a major pain in my butt trying to find a good screen protector for my V30. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. I mean, you know, if I'm going to try and find something nice to say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. God, that was so harsh, man. All right, let's let's move away from that. This <laughs> that just messed up. I, I'm gonna try and find. I, no, I mean the thing is, I want HTC to be competitive. I want HTC to do, be doing well in the market, but it is reinforcing that they are not making products for me right now. So I'm gonna have a hard time sort of quantifying a feeling about one of their products when it's not for me. That's I mean, you've designed a phone in a lab that's not 
for me. It doesn't fit my lifestyle. It doesn't fit my usage. And I can try and guess who it's for, but I, I, I want them to be more exciting and more competitive and more dynamic than this. And so I, I don't know what that actually means outside of, you know, don't copy the competition and maybe give me a phone that looks like it was built for a grown up. Also, I mean, have your cool jewel toned candy colored phones, but I don't want to show that off when I'm taking a meeting. When I'm taking a meeting, I'm actually having a lot of fun taking my BlackBerry because everyone has a sort of like, oh, how retro <laughs> you to be using a BlackBerry, but it looks like it's made for grownups. So, I don't know. It's I'm having right. a hard time with HTC's <laughs> current strategy. OK. All right. And Juan is done with his HTC rant. Um, moving on to <laughs> what a rant. <laughs> rant yeah. Connected speakers um, galore this week. Um, we had the uh, Sonos One reviews drop. JBL announced the Link, Link uh, 10, 20, and 30. UE Boom announced the UE, so UE, sorry, which is uh, Ultimate Ears. Ultimate Ears, yeah, right. uh, They announced the UE Blast and UE Mega Blast, which are powered by Alexa. So, uh, and finally, Microsoft also um, showcased, uh, at least reviews dropped for the Harman Kardon Invoke powered by Cortana. Um, so there's a lot of um, connected speaker stuff this week out there. Um, I want to get your general thoughts. I know everyone has tried each one, but just like, what do you think uh, with this space? And I'll give my thoughts on, on all of them since I've kind of used all of them, sort of. It's there. Yeah. Okay. So one says it's there. <laughs> There. Well, so. I, I, no, actually, I'm happy to see the competition because Google can't make a speaker right now. So, <laughs> no, really, no one's going with me on that. Google Home Mini freaking out and having to disable touch to no. Oh yeah, that's right. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, God, Google did that thing with the Home Max or whatever they call that. Yeah, it's not. That's not until, until oh, oh, okay. Um, yeah. I mean. It, I, I think it's interesting. It's interesting space. Like Sam and I have gone back and forth with the Sonos, um, Sonos with the Sonos one, and you know Sam really wanted it to at least be a hub, uh, you know. Um, but Sonos is being agnostic and saying, look, we will support any music. Uh, sorry, not music. Any voice assistant. So it would definitely support uh, Google Assistant at some point uh, early next year, and it's going to most likely support Cortana as well. Uh, with JBL, their speaker is a, it's a portable Google Home speaker. And um, it's actually pretty good. You know, JBL makes some nice speakers. Um, it's just one of those things where um, the use case scenario that JBL had, I think, works better for a lot more people than Google Home will. Because it's a portable speaker, which a lot of people will buy. Mm -hmm. And they have different versions. And of course, you can cast to all speakers and all that kind of stuff. And it makes it, to me, I think that's the one that actually will quietly do well, the JBL speaker. Because at the end of the day, you can still take it out to the beach or whatever. You don't, you know, it's, it's the speaker you buy that you can use anywhere. Water resistance, that kind of stuff. Probably similar with the UE Blast uh, with Alexa. I'm not a big fan of Alexa. Don't stop. Um, so, <laughs> the, the, this thing with, with that, like, there's no hey or okay in front of it. So, whenever you just say the word Alexa, it initially does this, but it listens to you quickly and then it's slow to respond. So, it, yeah. it, it, it's just much slower. And I, I just hope they improve that because for me, it's a little bit of a bummer um, on that side. Uh, Cortana. Um, works well although i was i had a trip because i was still in sam initially i was like cortana can control my sonos i don't know how i didn't realize that i the, the way i labeled my sonos and my lights have the same word in there so basically <laughs> when i said like if i said cortana turn on my my lights it would turn the lights on and r b music started playing it was like low red lights in there like cortana's trying to pick up <laughs> Trying to pick up E. I was like, I was like, whoa, man, Cortana. I mean, like, I know I haven't seen you with Master Chief in a while, but come on. Like, <laughs> like, take it easy. I left Master Chief. I want the corn on now. Yeah. But uh, no, I, I, the pair with Harman Kardon, they have a really good speaker. Um, that's that's a that's a good part. Uh, Cortana needs 
to also pick up and learn, but it works fairly well. Um, it also has skills and can do all, you can do all those things. I just think that if Microsoft is serious, they can actually push this out. It just, it's just a matter of, are they serious? Like, you know, Nope. <laughs> you know, do we know? Be because, nope. Cause that's, cause that's the thing. If they are, um, that's well, because, because to me right now it's, it's the second best. I can see Microsoft being serious on this end because they're not the ones making the hardware. Hardware, yeah, hardware. that's 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 the thing. That just, just like with the mixed reality headsets. Yeah, that I can see, right? If Microsoft is actually working with a with a partner to to, to provide hardware, that makes more sense, and I can see Microsoft going that route and actually delivering their services that way. It gives them that pairing of software or AI and hardware, right? So, I hope it works out, but the problem is people aren't used to using Cortana, right? Cortana yeah. all the implementations for Cortana or well, all the things they could have done that's really awesome with Cortana like I would expect to, con to connect to my PC because it's Cortana on my PC or connect to the Xbox it's, because it's, it's, it's the, the next uh, update it's in it's in Windows yeah we're Cortana. saying it's the next update but we've seen Microsoft not deliver on this no 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 it's 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 coming in the it's already in the Windows beta so it means it's already coming down the kind of like how unified apps already arrived, right? So that's the, that's the problem. <laughs> no, no, that, that part never even showed up. But I'm no, that part, that part never showed up in the beta. But <laughs> that's the problem, right? I have no trust that Microsoft will deliver on their um, assistance, right? They, on their AI, because they've done certain things in the past that makes me say, uh, maybe I shouldn't buy into this. Yeah, no, so I, I, this I agree with that, that, that trust that you build from being like a Samsung or like a Google or an Amazon, this is where that trust comes into play. Because now people can say, oh, I will jump into this ecosystem because I believe Microsoft is going to continue with it. No, no I, I definitely agree with you there. I'm, I'm, not, I'm just saying that, look, Unified Apps never even showed up. This is in the beta, which means people are testing it. Those are two different things in Microsoft. I just, I mean, I agree with you. I think it's one of those things where, um, you know, when you use Google Home and you ask Google to do things, you know, very, you know, in a conversation manner, Google understands it very well. Cortana yeah. is not their conversation. She will get things and, you know, she will be able to do certain things, but she's not on a conversational level. At least she's faster than Alexa, who just tends to like have this, you know, like slowness to her. Um, the one thing I'll say, like Alexa slow? No, Alexa is a smart, smart assistant. No, I didn't see. I just seen the takes power forever to answer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, the one thing I, I will say with um, what I appreciated with uh, Cortana is as soon as you plugged in the speaker, she started giving you, you know, you know, like Google Home, you plug it in and we say, oh, you please download the app and that's it. Cortana will tell you the steps. It's almost like she's like, she is like, you know, if there was a hologram and it was Master Chief, she was like, I'm waiting for you. Go ahead, do it, download the app. And when you do that, do this. So it almost walked you through the whole process. Well, and as I have in, to say that Microsoft's focus user. for Cortana has always been to create something a bit more organic like that. So, I mean, remember, Cortana was the first that you could start doing um, location and contact aware yeah. notifications and reminders and stuff. Like yeah. how amazing it was on a Windows phone to say like, hey, the next time my wife calls, can you remind me to ask her about the dog's medication? And it would be like, oh, I see you have an email from your wife. Do you want to ask her about the dog's medication? Oh, I see you have a text message from your wife. Do you want to ask her about the dog's medication? I mean, stuff like that, I think, has been, I mean, to, to Microsoft's credit, they have been trying to address that natural language interaction far longer. Um, I, was in a, I was in the car with uh, Josh Vergara, and he's got Android Auto, um, like actually built into the dash. And um, it's hilarious that he, would, he asked a, a navigation question and Android Auto corrected him that he didn't phrase it properly. And on the surface, you're like, oh, okay, well, you just need the right syntax. Wait a minute. Android Auto recognized what he was trying to do. And instead of giving him a result, told him he was asking the question wrong. You're doing it wrong. Yeah. How screwed up is that? You knew what I was trying to get. You knew what I was trying to ask. 
<laughs> but you still didn't give me a result and instead told me the proper way to ask the question. Screw yeah. you. I'm operating on <laughs> <laughs> I can, I, I can, I can on that that auto that car right. looking at it and go, screw you. <laughs> screw you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were saying, Sam, sorry. Saying, isn't it the same, almost similar to the conversation we had yesterday, right? Where I'm like, it would be really awesome if I could change commands like, hey, Google, um, don't. Turn on living room lights and turn off bedroom lights. Yeah. It can't do that. But the whole idea of these assistants is they should be able to do things like that. You should be able to chain commands. And this is something, and you are right, um, Juan, and this still plays again to my point with Microsoft. Microsoft has been working on this. They kind of previewed something very similar to this on the Windows phone. And then where is Windows phone? Yeah. So it's like you can preview all the great stuff and for the, over the last few years you promised and you've broken promises and you closed your ecosystem now you want people to come into your ecosystem again there is no trust no no i i, I definitely agree i think what I they need they need to do is the same approach they took with mixed reality is the approach they have to take with this mm -hmm. um you go out to every single oem you help them build it yeah, I mean, mixed reality, I think, is the perfect solution. Like, they're not even giving reference designs. They're literally like, <laughs> there up. is one platform. You can change the plastic shell, but we're going to make sure that everything is completely consistent. All of the controllers interact with each other exactly the same way. All of the headsets are to the same reference design. And we've done all the legwork for you. Please just put your label on it, <laughs> call it whatever you want. And yeah. we'll have a real standard that everyone can participate with. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think that's what they need to do with this. And, you know, at, at this point, go out and look for partners in that space, whether it's, you know, look, you know, go back and get a Samsung. I know Samsung is, has scrapped the idea of a Bixby uh, speaker, you know, the, that was rumored to be coming out. They might still come back at it, but go and talk to all these partners, whoever it is, and get them in, in play so that you can actually yeah. get, get that going. Because when you do have it going, then you now have a situation where people are like, oh, okay, all right. So I, I tried this Cortana and it looks like it works. And, um, you know, uh, the, the one good thing they, they did that anybody does is you've got Samsung smart things to work with it immediately. That is the best hub on the planet <laughs> because it allows you, I mean, it allowed, I mean, it allowed me to control my Sonos, which technically shouldn't be controlled, but, and even though it doesn't have, it, Samsung is sneaky because it, it just finds every, <laughs> no, no, Sonos is not listed on there, right. but it will find no, any Wi-Fi speaker. That was the title of this podcast. Samsung is sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it will find every Wi-Fi speaker on your network and just add it in there. So, you know, it's it's a good thing. So hopefully they build from that. I mean, it's interesting that we now have a lot of competition and there's a lot of connected speakers out there. I mean, by come Black Friday, there's going to be a whole ton because, you know, Amazon speakers, yeah. new versions are coming out too as well. So it's going to be interesting to see. And it all depends who wins the the actual... AI race, whose AI is the best at the end. And, you know, I think Apple HomePod is still coming out this year, right? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. So, there's yeah, that. I mean, the, the, the space is going to get crazy competitive. But again, it's we've talked about this before. Like, Microsoft had this huge momentum being the first with living room and, you know, home computing devices and have completely seeded their lead to all of these other manufacturers, developers. Well, I mean, they, they have a chance to come back. I mean, the, the market is no, goes away from that. They, they, they do. I, they have a chance. I, I'm yeah. like, but they, they I'm will. Not confident it's that they're nice. going to execute on this opportunity very well. And I'm hoping that at least they're looking at their other uh, their other avenues. Like mixed reality, I think, is something that they could stand to <clears throat> be more competitive in. Something that I think consumers are more likely to trust Microsoft on. Oh yeah, yeah. Again, it's it's up to them to fumble the ball and whether or not we're going to see them actually, uh, you know, make make a home run and score a goal and bad other mixed sports metaphors. Yeah, yeah, that is that is just fantastic. All right, cool guys, <laughs> we have come to the end of the show. Um, thank you everyone for joining us, and of course, we are the part of the show where we talk about what we have on the channel and uh, what we can expect next week. Start off with you, Juan. I know you started a brand new show this week. Yeah, I did. 
you have. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. So uh, Trisha Hirschberger and I are co-hosting a show for New Egg Studios called New Egg Now. Um, and it is, it's, it's a, a little bit, one part, like we're, we're, what we're trying to create is one part uh, attack of the show and one part QVC. So Newegg is looking at deals and specials, very limited run, and they want to do that in a fun way. And uh, I, I couldn't ask for a better co-host for something like that than Trisha, because she's fun, but she actually, she knows her stuff. Like she used yeah. to be a product rep for Samsung. So when it gets into the technical stuff, she actually knows what she's talking about. And so this first week we did uh, MSI, like $500 off MSI uh, gaming PCs. We did Vertigear chairs. We did G-Skill, RGB RAM. Next week, one of our partners is EVGA. So uh, if you were maybe shopping a new video card, a new graphics card, I, I, I can't say what, but that might be an episode that you guys would want to tune in on because... There could be some cool stuff, and we're going to be talking to Asus uh, about mixed reality and Acer about some cool gear too. So I think we'll have a lot of fun. Uh, Pocket Now, we're all in on Pixel Two, um, so I'll be covering Pixel Two stuff. We just put up our LG V30 real camera review. If you want to dig deep, it's 12 minutes of photo and video samples from the uh, from the LG V30. On Gadget Guy, last night we had our uh, Geek Book Club where we talked about the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> And uh, I want to extend an invite because I know you guys have been watching Expanse. Next month, we're going to start the Expanse series. So if you guys would like to join us on the Geek Book Club and talk about a book, we're going to be doing uh, our November episode on that book. So right. I'd love to have you guys. The first on. book, is it called Expanse or is it called something else? No, it's the, the, the Leviathan. Um, okay. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, I will be So yeah, lots, lots of stuff cooking, but um, I'm, I'm having some fun. So it's good times. Cool. Uh, Warren. Oh, 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 hey, what? Really? Really, man? Yes. Oh, he's back to his his old <laughs> webcam. Yeah, well, the other one wasn't working. I was sitting there trying to fix things. Sorry, I was trying to, like, make things work. And you were, It was looking really good, though. That was, yeah. I mean, camera side, looking great. Yeah, that was just 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 that Hangouts being a pain. I was using a 35-millimeter lens. That's probably one of the reasons why I looked that way. But um, yeah, I'm sorry. I was fighting with that. Are we at the point of the show where I, tell, where I say stuff and stuff? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Exactly. That's why I said word. Stuff <laughs> and then stuff. All right, yeah. we're done. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, later, Juan. Oh, see you later, Juan. Bye, guys. Have a good week. All right. Um, okay, cool. Um, on our end, we uh, we have a special video from the colonel. He got to harass people at the ZTE event. So definitely check that out. I think you will find that to be quite entertaining. Um, we also have our Black Panther uh, trailer reaction. That thing was on point. Um, didn't, didn't the Colonel react to it yet? I don't think he's watched it yet. I, I'm not sure. He you know, needs to watch it. But, uh, the Black Panther trailer, if the awesome. Colonel has watched it. Oh, yeah. you, should, you, should, uh, you should have isn't, him it, it. Isn't that your neighboring country? Isn't it his neighboring country yeah, yeah. or whatever? I don't. I don't want to start a civil war with Wakanda and Singala, man. It's just not, you know. Aren't they neighbors? <sighs> I don't know, man. I, I, I think. I, I think the way Wakanda's been positioning itself, man. You, you might be in for a war anyway. So. Okay. I mean, all right. We'll, 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 we'll have to get the colonel up to speed, man. We'll have to get him up to speed. <laughs> um, we also did our hands-on on the Surface Book Two, mm -hmm. um, and then we have our two connected speakers, as we mentioned, the Sonos One review. Uh, which is powered by Alexa. Um, definitely check that out if you're interested and if you have a Sonos system, this is something that I think you will find very useful. And the Harman Kardon Invoke powered by Cortana, Microsoft's, of course, um, uh, AI assistant. And uh, I, I would tell you, in terms of audio, both of them sound very good. Um, uh, so there you have it. Go check it out. Uh, I want to thank uh, Juan. I want to thank you know Warren as well as uh, Sam for joining in again this week, and thank you all for chiming in the chat. I haven't actually had a chance to check, but thanks for you know just putting your thoughts down there. And if you have any more thoughts while you're watching this later on, definitely leave them in the comment section of this video. Uh, check out all the channels. You can check out Mr. Juan Bagnell. He is part of the Pocket Now Network, uh, and uh, he. Um, you can find his you know mobile videos there his own personal channel as some gadget guy he also has a new show with new egg so you can check that out it's on thursdays i believe so um 
either New York's YouTube uh, page or Facebook page, you will find uh, the show there. And then Mr. Warren Bowman is, uh, of course, himself on on uh, on YouTube and uh, all social networks. It is bw1.com right there. Uh, you can check him out, follow him, check out all his videos. And Sam, aka Black Iron underscore Man, that is his Twitter handle. Send him a lot of tweets. Seriously, tweet him because he will not respond. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and myself it's board at work uh so uh follow us on youtube twitter it's the same handle thank you very much guys and uh always enjoy your take oh, god, 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 I missed the... uh, always enjoy uh, your entertainment uh, <laughs> blah